One, two, three. This is Brian from ActiveMelody.com. Well, this week we have another solo acoustic guitar lesson. This is kind of in the vein of uh, jam with yourself. I have a, a series on that uh, at Active Melody, which is kind of teaching you how to just sort of have a jam session with yourself. And so what I'm doing in this lesson is showing you how to play a, a lead and a rhythm on acoustic guitar uh, with no accompaniment. So there's no jam track with this week's lesson. It's just a pretty straight 12-bar blues. Um, you can do this on an acoustic or electric guitar, so uh, just grab whichever one you have. All you need is a guitar and a pick, and you're pretty much set. This is going to be a two-part video, so in this video, we're going to look at the first part. If you want to get the second part and the tablature that goes along with this, you're going to have to go to activemelody.com and look for EP049. That's the lesson number for this lesson, but let's go ahead and take a look at this first part. Okay, so the way this starts it is uh, you're you start with the bass part. So I think of this as kind of, uh, you're kind of simulating an upright bass. So what you, the, the part goes... And I'm going to show you a couple of different variations on that. You're going to use this a lot when you're playing, this kind of, uh, this little walking bass part. Um, and the first thing that happens is just an open sixth string, uh, or the low E string. And then we slide up, I use my ring finger for this, I start on the 2nd fret and I slide up to the 4th fret on the 6th string like this. And the reason, you could play that straight, but there, when you're sliding you're kind of simulating the upright bass, you know, which is fretless anyway, and so there's a lot of sliding to kind of hit the note. And I, I think that you, you, you need to translate as much of that, or at least that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, in this is to translate that kind of upright bass sound. So that's that's why the slide there. Um, obviously there's frets, so it's not, you know, it doesn't sound like a true fretless, but you're simulating it the best you can with what you have. Okay. Now after that, I go to the second fret and play the fifth string, and I use my pointer finger. Then we're back to the fourth fret on the uh, fifth string this time. So thus far we have these four notes. Okay, and I'll, I'll get into the picking pattern with my right hand. Uh, let me, let's get the fretted notes first, and then I'll show you how to, to pick it. Now, after that, then I play on the second fret, I play the fourth string, again with my pointer finger. So you can see we're kind of jumping back and forth between the fourth fret and second fret. If, so that helps you visually see kind of what's going on here. So the picking pattern is down, 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 up, down to this point. Now, an interesting thing happens with the timing of this. So what we're going to do from this point is we're just going to walk back down. So, uh, so the, the frets, the fretted notes are going to be uh, second fret, fourth string, fourth fret, fifth string, second fret, fifth string. We're going to go start on the uh, fourth fret, sixth string. We're going to slide down to the second fret. So we're just repeat. We're going backwards. We're going to and then that open sixth string. So what you have thus far is you have. Now let's get the timing of that. So what makes it interesting is the there's that little stop there. And if we were to count this out, it would sound like this. You'd say one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one. So you can see what happens is for this part, uh, what I'm doing is I'm playing on the ands and I'm actually skipping the one. 
So it's, it seems weird that you would actually not play a note on the one. And what I mean by that is, listen to when I'm counting out these, uh, these bars here. So I'm going one. Every time I say a one, a two, or three, or four, um, I'm hitting a note. So listen, one and two and three and four and one. See how we skip the one in terms of playing it? And two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. So that's if you're trying to get the timing, uh, just count that out and try and remember you're playing this on the ands and it so it sounds like. And let me let me do it slower. We, we, what we have is. And so just practice that. If, you, if you're having a hard time up to this point just to get, trying to get those notes, just, just kind of loop that over and over again just to kind of get that part down. All right, so then the next thing that happens is the rhythm part. So if you think of the... If you think of that, that's kind of the... Uh, I said it's the bass part, but it's also kind of the lead part. And a lot of times if you're just playing by yourself with, uh, you know, with no accompaniment, you end up doing this call and response thing. That's what I think of it. So the call is... And then the response is... Uh, and so anyway, that's the rhythm part, this little E ninth chord that we're going to learn. And um, to make the chord, um, I'm uh, starting with my middle finger here on the uh, 7th fret, 5th string. My pointer finger goes down on the 6th fret, 4th string. My ring finger goes down on the 7th fret, um, fourth str uh, third string rather. So you have that little D seventh shape here, and then I take my pinky and I push down on the seventh fret second string, and I'm only playing the middle four strings. So I'm playing strings four, five, five, four, three, and two, and that makes an E nine chord. And these nine chords are really nice because they're very jazzy and. You can use them in, in blues. Uh, it's kind of somewhere between jazz and blues to my ear. Um, but I use that chord a lot, for example. Um, so that's a, so if you're playing a you know just a standard you know 12 bar blues jam that most people do, just remember now you have this E9 chord, you can always come up here and play. And it just it gives it a nice uh, nice little touch I think. Okay so that's the chord and so all I do is I play it uh, where I showed you and then I slide everything down a fret and then slide it back up. So all we're doing is going Now watch the right hand to kind of get the strum. I'm really just kind of doing down strokes but every now and then I'll kind of give a throw in a little bit of an upstroke. Let me do it slow. Notice the right hand it just keeps going. And and so it's a matter of applying the pressure with your left hand and releasing the pressure that gives you that that muted sound. So just practice that. So now what you have, you know, you take these two parts and put them together. You have And uh, before I moved on, if I were you and if you're struggling at this point, just end there and let that be your what you're going to do for the day and just keep repeating it over and over again until you can get some fluidity and being able to quickly jump up here and play this E9 chord. Um, now I said, uh, in, when I started, I said that there's some variations on this. One variation is you could go. So you could you could do it that way. And if you were playing this um, and, and repeating a part, I would switch it up. So that you you don't have to always come up and play that high. Uh, or I was gonna say high E. It's like sort of the middle E. You don't have to play that E. You can play come up here and play this note. And so that's the 5th fret, 5th uh, string. So 
So you have options, I guess. Either one of those work, and they both sound great. Okay, so now the second time through, the A part, I play... And that's a Bill Kirchin lick, by the way, if you're wondering what that is or if that sounds familiar. Uh, there's this awesome song, one of the, my favorite guitar songs. If you're not familiar with it, you got to go check it out. Go on YouTube and look it up. It's called Hot Rod Lincoln. Just killer guitar. And that's, I, that's actually, that lick comes from that song. And if you listen to it, you'll hear where it came from. But... So what we're doing for that... Um, is I'm starting by barring the first four strings on the second fret with my pointer finger. And the reason you do that is if you, you've basically got an A chord. And now anything I'm going to do around that uh, will be kind of supporting that A chord, if that makes sense. I just sort of, I always think of the chord, uh, if so if we're playing a blues and we're in the A part, I always just kind of instinctively make the A chord and then anything else I do... Uh, at least you know around that chord. Uh, at least I've, I'm in position for the A chord. I guess if that makes any sense. Um, so that's how I kind of think of uh, when I'm playing something like this. That way, if you wanted to do something different, if you wanted to just come up here and play an A seventh or something, you're already in position for it. So um, so anyway, this part you have one two three four two two three four three two three four four two three. So you're you're dealing with a, a much faster pick. And this is where you're going to have to do alternate strumming. So you're going to have to go down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And watch my picking hand. So what I'm doing... It's just down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. And that never breaks. There's not like a break in. So it makes it easy. At least you know exactly what you need to do. Now let's get the fretting. Um, so I start with the fifth string which is an open string, the open A. And then I take my middle finger and I go to the third fret, uh, fifth string. And then I take my ring finger and I go to the uh, fourth fret, uh, fifth string. So those are your first uh, four notes. One, two, three, four. Now, I take these fingers off the fretboard, leaving this this guy sort of stays down the whole time. And now I'm playing the fourth fret uh, on, I'm sorry, I'm playing the fourth string on the second fret. So we have. Now I'm going to come up with my ring finger and play on the, and you have to use your ring finger on this, and you'll see why in just a second. I'm going to play on the fourth fret, fourth string. So the notes are. Now I'm going to release that and play, uh, that's again the 2nd fret 4th string. Now you can start to see why you leave this down. It, it, it just needs to stay there the whole time really. Now I'm going to take my pinky, and this is why I said to use your ring finger on the 4th fret because you're going to need your pinky on the 5th fret. And if you, those of you that watch a lot of my videos, you, you see I don't use my pinky that often. So, uh, But this is a situation where I'm going to have to. So pinky goes down on the 5th fret, 4th string. And then I'm going to release the pinky and play again the 2nd uh, fret, 4th string. So what we have is... So it's getting, um, you know, somewhat complicated maybe at this point if you're new to, to picking. But don't let it stop you. You can, you can just keep keep trying this you'll have it if you just if you practice it for a little bit of time so let me do it slowly now after that I'm gonna put my ring finger back down on the fourth fret fourth string now watch this so what I did was I went fourth fret fourth string fifth fret fourth string back to fourth fret fourth string release so that I'm on the second fret four string. So that will be the most challenging part really in this, I think in this whole thing is that, that part. Um, because it has to be syncopated with your, with what the pick is doing. So when the pick is going down, up, down, up, down, up, 
the left hand has to be totally in sync with the with the right hand, uh, or it'll sound off. And so that's where, if you're new to this, you're going to want to set a metronome at something probably much slower, or tap your foot much slower to try and get. get it uh, you know fluid that's the thing that's the that's the secret in in any plan I mentioned this in the last video but just don't break the rhythm that's where people will stop and look and that you, if you're trying to play something and where it looks like you've made a mistake as long as you keep the rhythm going for the most part people will excuse a, a mistake or two but when you break the rhythm it's it's painfully obvious that something isn't right so after after that, then I come down and play the uh, fourth fret fifth string, and then the second fret fifth string. Okay, so let me play that whole A part. I'll do it slowly. So uh, let me back up. I'll play everything up to this point, just so we have it. Okay, so after that, I come down and I play the low E string again, or the, the sixth string, open sixth string again, and I just do the little E9 chord, using that same chord again. And now, I come in up here and I do this, uh, this walking bass part that goes, and I love that, it's, uh, it, that definitely sounds like something you'd hear an upright bass player do. So we come to this this F sharp note here, which is a the second fret um, sixth string, is where we start that. Then I come up and play the fourth fret sixth string. Then I'm going to play the open fifth string or the the A string. Now I'm going to play the first fret, so I'm going to fret the first fret on the fifth string, then I'm going to come up and play the second fret on the fifth string. So let's just go over those notes. We have one, two, three, four, five. And the timing of it is, so I kind of did this one twice actually. Let me do it slower. Whoops. Now, from here, what I do is we can take advantage of the fact that we have this open A note, and here's what I mean by that. It sounds like you're doing a lot of fretting, but all you're doing, it actually makes walking up here a lot easier. You're going to take your uh, finger off the fretboard to play the open fifth string. Then I'm going to come up and play the 4th fret on the 5th string. So all these notes, by the way, are on the 5th string. So I'm not going to tell you the string number. You'll just know it's 5th string. I'll just tell you the fret number. So we have 4, open, 5th, open, 6th, open, and then all the way up to the 7th. And guess what? Remember that E9 chord? Well, that works out perfect because that note was in that E9 chord. Remember we play it with our middle finger? So when you get up to this, use whichever fingers you want, but when you every you get up to the seventh fret here on the fifth string, just you play that with your middle finger so that you can be right, right in position to, to make those chords. So let me play that slowly. So what we have is see how right here, right about here, I switch to the middle finger so that I'm in position to grab that chord. Watch it again. Okay, now, once we get to here, what I play is a E9, then I come down, I slid everything down two frets to play, 
the uh, it's really a D D nine. Sorry, I was thinking about the chord. So, and then what I do is I come down and play an F sharp seventh chord. And all I'm doing for that is I'm barring um, the second fret. And then I have one finger down on the 4th fret 5th string, which is my ring finger. And then my middle finger goes down on the 3rd fret 3rd uh, string. And you can actually play all 6 strings on that. So you have... And then the last chord I make is a B7 chord. And for that, it's really the same, uh, it's, uh, or, or it's a B9, it's, it's however you want to, it's really, it's a, I, technically it's a B9 chord. Um, so for that, I'm using that same shape that I used here on the, the E9 and the D9, but now I'm playing it so that my middle finger is on the second fret. And that gives you a B9 chord, which is really nice. So... Uh, so let me back up and play that little turnaround part. So we have. Now watch the timing of that too. So it's kind of downstroke, downstroke. Notice I'm slapping it in between to sort of A, create a rhythm, and B, kill the sound. So it's, it serves two purposes. Now, if you're have, if you're new to playing and this this chord gets you because it's out of the sequence, uh, just skip it. Just play it like this. You could come down here and play this chord, which would be a C uh, nine, and then slide everything down one to the B nine. And I actually debated putting making that a C nine instead, so it would sound like this. It actually it sounds just as cool, um, but for whatever reason, when I record it or when I did the video at the beginning, I, I played it that way. I never know what's going to come out. That's part of my problem is try and keep it fresh. So, uh, so now you have options. You can do it either way. It has a little jazzier sound to it. Or you can play it that way. So that's all we have for this first part. Um, make sure you practice the timing. As I mentioned, that's that's critical is to get the timing right. So set a metronome, tap your foot, and uh, and just get the timing. Now, let me go ahead and play through everything uh, up to that point. I'll do it slowly so you have this as a reference, and then uh, and then you'll have to watch part two for the, the second half. So here we go.